Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you how to take the divergence of a cylindrical vector field or a vector in cylindrical coordinates. To remind ourselves what that looks like, here we have a little drawing. We show the x, the y, and the z axis. But if we take any point in space in cylindrical coordinates, we have a distance away from the z axis called rho. We have the unit vector rho hat. Then we have the angle with respect to the x axis, so that's counterclockwise we call this angle phi and there's the unit vector phi and then we have the distance away from the xy plane in the z direction that would be the z coordinate and there's the unit vector z. Now if we're going to take the derivative of that or at least not the derivative but the divergence of that what we have to do is take this term right here and apply it to each of the three terms here take this term apply it to each of the three terms there take this term and apply it to each of the three terms there. Not only that Notice that the row coordinate times the row unit vector is actually a product. So when we take the partial derivative of that, we have to use the product rule. What I'm going to do here is do a few of these before we do the whole thing to see how that actually looks like. Not only that, we have to remember that the partial derivative or the derivative with respect to rho, uh, respect to phi of rho hat is actually phi hat and the partial derivative or the derivative of, of phi hat with respect to phi is equal to negative rho hat. So remember that we have to take that into account as well. But first what we're going to do is take the partial derivative of the first term here with respect to rho and of course we have to multiply times rho hat. So we have rho hat times the partial with respect to rho of this first term right here. What does it actually look like? Since that's a product, this is going to be equal to rho hat times, using the product rule, we take the first, a sub rho, times a partial with respect to rho of rho hat, the partial of rho hat with respect to rho, plus the second, rho hat times the partial with respect to rho of the, co the coordinate, a sub rho. Now take a look at this term right here. What does that mean? Well, that means that if we take the unit vector rho and we take the derivative of that respect to rho, how much does the unit vector change when rho changes? And if you look at it here, if rho becomes longer, that should not have any effect on the unit vector. It's in the same direction, same length. So therefore, this component here goes to zero. Now we multiply this times this, and this is the dot product. What is rho dot rho? Well, rho dot rho is equal to 1, and then the surviving term is simply the partial of a with respect to rho, or the rho coordinate of a with respect to rho. That's how we do that. Notice each time we take the partial derivative of one of these terms, we end up with two terms. So we have 3 times 3 times 2, which is a total of 18 terms. But we can make it a little bit easier on ourselves, realizing that whenever we take the partial of rho with respect to rho, that simply goes to zero. So that means we don't have to put all the terms down when we try to do this. Let's do one more. Let's take, a, for example, this multiplied times this and see what we get. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this term and take the partial derivative of the first one here and see what we get. So we take the unit vector phi hat times one over rho times the partial of whatever we take the partial of with respect to phi and we're going to do that of the middle term there which is a sub phi times phi hat. So this is equal to, we take those two terms or those two components here I should say, we take the unit vector phi hat times 1 over rho and we're going to multiply that times the partial derivative with respect to phi of this product here. Remember that's a product. So that means we take the first, a sub phi, times the partial with respect to phi times phi hat plus phi hat times the partial with respect to phi of the first here, which is a sub phi. All right, how does that simplify? Well, first of all, we take the partial with respect to phi of phi hat, we come up over here, and we know that that's equal to minus rho hat. So this can now be written as phi hat times 1 over rho times a sub phi 
times the negative, because it's a negative, rho hat, plus, now how does the, no, this stays the same, so that would be phi hat times the partial of the phi component of A with respect to phi. All right, how can we simplify that? Well, first of all, if we multiply this times this, remember this is a dot product, and when we dot the phi unit vector times the row unit vector, we get zero. So this term goes to zero, because when we multiply this times this, that is of course perpendicular to each other, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero, so this goes to zero, and we're then simply left with this times this, which is one, because when we dot rho, rho hat times rho hat, we get one, so it gives us one over rho, times the partial of a sub phi with respect to phi. So I just want to give you a feel of how we're going to go through this exercise of taking the divergence of, of a cylindrical vector field. Notice that each time you take the partial derivative of something like this, we have a product on our hands and we have to use the product, the product rule. So now that we know how that looks like and what we're going to do, now we're going to go through the whole process. And for that, we're going to start a brand new video. So video number 30, we're going to take the divergence of this and we're going to write it all down term by term to see what that looks like. So if you're interested in knowing how to do this or where the result came from, this is where you'll find it.